commentator is Basil Rysdale. China fights on as Nippon continues its unending terror from the skies. Home and countryside are demolished as the once stoic Chinese rush madly to shelters, tasting again and again the bitter cup of Japan's unceasing offensive, which now threatens the peace of the entire Pacific. No privacy in war. Tobruk in northern Africa tenaciously withstands repeated Axis attack. This lone British garrison in Libya remains a prospective rallying point for new campaigns to regain lost terrain. Heroic Greece suffers the pangs of war as Nazi might pours down the Balkans. A stunned people sorrowfully stand by as the invader destroys their homeland. Supporting British Empire troops are forced to abandon a valiant defense effort. In nearby Iraq, great oil supplies are endangered when revolt threatens. Britain enters and quickly wins control, while defenders abandon the fight and guns to the victors. Syria, age-old path to Suez and to India, is forced to surrender to Australians and free French as a further check to German ambitions to seize great stores of valued oil. A Vichy-mandated stronghold yields as its officers and men become prisoners of war. <music> Memories of the glory that once was France stir the deepest emotions as soldiers return from prison camps. The once revered battle flags of empire and republic pass in grim review before a still proud people whose hearts bow in submission in this, their darkest hour. Hands of the innocent reach out in hungry appeal. Dimmed eyes of the faithful stare in awe. Famished children, ration sustenance. This is France under the conqueror's heel. The most relentless sea hunt in all naval history. Britain's great battleship Hood has been sunk, sunk by the German raider Bismarck. Britain's guns bark revenge. The Bismarck is wounded, cornered, and doomed. The Bismarck, pride of the swastika fleet, dives to her watery end. Somewhere in the Atlantic, Britain's Prime Minister Winston Churchill meets President Roosevelt. A hand clasp that ushers in one of the most dramatic conferences between the leaders of nations ever recorded. Here, the next day, the Atlantic Charter with its eight points is formulated. As they part, hopes for a permanent peace rise in the hearts of the two great democracies of the world. United States Marines and Army forces arrive in Iceland, base of operations in the struggle to keep free the passage of ships between American and British shores. Shelters are quickly erected. Men and equipment are made ready for any emergency. Iceland becomes an outpost of defense as the sound of marching Marines fills the Arctic air. Many American-owned ships have been sunk on the high seas. One American destroyer was attacked on September 4th. Another destroyer was attacked and hit on October 17th. Eleven brave and loyal men of our Navy were killed by the Nazis. Today, in the face of this newest and greatest challenge of them all, we Americans have cleared our decks and taken our battle station. A daring raid in the Arctic, 
the subpolar island of Spitsbergen awakens to a surprise landing force of Canadians, free Norwegians and English swarming ashore. The radio station, source of German weather reports, is dynamited. A sapper is knocked to the ground by the terrific force of concussion as a coal mine is demolished. Huge stores of coal and oil are left burning to thwart reported German incursion. The inhabitants willingly evacuate to England to escape whatever fate Hitler may have planned for bleak outposts on the Arctic Circle. Sixteen million man days lost by strikes that slacken America's mighty defense effort. Throughout the nation, the wrath of the mob vents itself on non-sympathizers who attempt to pass mass picket lines. At widely scattered localities, police clash with strikers in hand-to-hand -hand conflict. Tear gas bombs burst before the American aviation plant at Inglewood, California, as United States troops arrive to take over the factory and preserve order. They move in to assure uninterrupted production of vitally essential aircraft for America and its friendly nations at war. America tests the mightiest bomber ever built. Three and a half million dollars worth of fighting plane takes to the sky. With its 8,000 horsepower and wing spread of 210 feet, the B-19 passes with colors flying, a symbol of air supremacy to come. Merchantmen, destroyers, battleships, cruisers slip down the ways as part of the huge program for a two-ocean navy. 690 ships have been ordered. Among these, the USS North Carolina, mightiest battleship afloat, America's grim challenge to marauders of the sea. With salvos roar, beware! At night, its guns blaze in spectacular majesty. A mighty bulwark to ensure America's freedom of the seas. The most titanic battle the world has ever known. The mightiest massing of manpower. Millions pitted against millions over lines a thousand miles in flaming length. Crushing mechanized might. Steel monsters clashing to the thousands in grim metallic thunder. Hitler's timetable upset by Russia's show of strength and courage. Surprise red defense tactics cost billions of men and equipment to the Nazis as delayed progress eastward proves Germany has met a formidable foe. Prisoners arrive. Nazis dazed by the sudden turn of battle. Bewildered, torn by the steel of Russian shellfire. In the Baltic, the Red Fleet goes into action. Soviet ships fire depth bombs and find their fatal mark. year in which the whole world sinks more deeply into the abyss of war.